In the time since Clarion Call, triage operation had become a common sight in New Eden. We have continued to use them too, throughout our apocrypha summer campaign. Sometimes for escalation, sometimes for emergency bailout. And sometimes, like here, a faction battleship absolutely insists that the hook has to be swallowed before the cavalry charge. A correctly run triage op remains an intensive challenge, but the question is, in an ever-changing game, how far can you push it? A hostile rebellion capital fleet is sieging a large new tower nearby with some sniping support. Alisaeus makes final launch checks on his drugs, strontium, fuel and boosters. With only 20 battleships in fleet, we have to go with close range setups to break the hostile capitals by the tank and to be able to use neutralizers. This means we cannot drop the triage carrier out of range of the enemy dreads. The enemy have 11 capitals on field, with 8 dreadnoughts and 3 carriers against the power of 1 carrier. Even with good orbiting against each dreadnought, our battleship will have to be wrapped against moral drones and carrier fighters and enemy sniping battleships that begin to come in at range and of course the large pop guns which are shooting all parties. The enemy dreadnoughts begin to prime the triage carrier which will have to run its local tank flat out while keeping the support up. Heavy damage is coming in and the broadcast window begins to flood with armor and capacitor requests. Alisei's Arkan is tanking 20,000 DPS but the hostile caps put out 30,000. It's a race against time. By muting the dread, we can knock out the capacitor heavy guns on the revelations and more. Eight percent left on the walls. Um, se secondary to me will be pitch code to leave two nukes on a empty. The carrier has held out long enough, and in the meantime, most of the hostile capital have been killed. With most of their firepower destroyed or retreating, the few capitals that remain no longer pose a threat to our triage carrier. Hostile support that worked in at range has now been driven off by the Poscon, since it meant they were out of rep range of their carriers.
Although many capitals were able to escape, the enemy has lost seven dreadnoughts and a carrier. We have taken no losses, although, if we had taken even one, the misusing or damage might have cost us the fight entirely. We scoop the loot while tanking the path, leaving the capital graveyard hanging above it. But what if the situation is worse than 10 to 1? A triage carrier in the right situation can be devastating, but it takes more than one card to regularly play well against the marauding capital fleet of New New Eden. Rather than try to hide triage carriers as repping nodes amongst other carriers, we applied remote rep battleship principles to capitals. Primitive versions were seen in our Equinox video, and the present day result we call Pantheon. In this footage, while sieging a pass, we are hot dropped by a large AAA capital fleet, though not with the result they expect. Local rappers were removed completely and replaced with resistant relays, with most armor wrapping carriers carrying a full rack of five capital remote wraps in the hive. With an interwoven capacitor spider that generates energy, 10 carriers can perma tank over 50,000 damage a second without overloading, which is much more than that number of dreadnoughts can put out, and still have webs, grams, and ECCM. Defensive version can tank even more, and it can quickly scale up to hundreds of thousands of DPS. With the right implants, the energy spider can create enormous resistance against neutralizers, whilst powering our own talisman bulgons when required to new the enemy. Projected ECCM from support will sense the strength to extreme levels. Hostiles cannot kill our capitals, but are able to return to their tower once some of their shield tanks fail. Damage comes from fighters and sentry drones, and high slot rolls like neutralizing and smart bombing are farmed out to support ships. So, Let's go all in. In this battle, we engage a Pantheon group of 10 carriers against a final total of 26 carriers and dreadnoughts. Sons of Tangra begin by engaging a tower with a triage carrier and battleships. The control tower is completely incapacitated and can play no role at all in the fight. We send in a smaller number of battleships and jump in two Pantheon carriers to get things started.
The enemy's triage carrier begins well by refing our damage, but against our low alpha, the start cycle boost of shield ref isn't needed, and mixed tanking of support makes it breakable under capacitator pressure. As the first battleship goes down, a Sino drops, and three hostile dreadnoughts jump in. This is the cue for our remaining 8 carriers to jump. But the escalation is what the enemy has been counting on. The dominoes fall and the hostile cap fleet comes in. leaving us nearly 2 to 1 outnumbered by a mixed carrier and dread group, which matches our carrier escalation on dreads alone. The hostile fleet first chooses the Prime Link Leo, a regular triage pilot, probably because if he were in triage mode, he could not be wrapped. For the same reasons, we switch to the enemy triage carrier, and also so that the enemy cannot wrap its support as effectively. We have to rely on good neutralizing, or else he could tank our fleet. The enemy expect to have enough punch to break through the Archon directly, even in triage, but Link is not in triage and is held up by the strong Pantheon Spider. Probably assuming the rep to be coming from another triage carrier, they switch fire to Alizaeus, whilst their own one dies. Although the tank is holding, with more hostile capitals coming in, it's important to reduce enemy DPS and Alizaeus ping for Gunny to warp in a smart bombing battleship from an off grid spot. Now deciding that no triage is involved in our spider tank, the hostiles focus on the shield tankers. However, the chimeras are armor tanked and slaved against Alpha. Unable to break the Chimeras, the hostile begin warping out to regroup. Unfortunately, due to lack of tackers, several neutralized dreads make it out. Oh. 
the enemy capitals continue to go down. Ship scanners allow us to see their capacity level and to ensure that the secondary target is capped out as it becomes prime. To their credit, enemy cap pilots who die come back in new ships alongside more reinforcements. Our smart bombing hits continue. But eventually, the enemy has begun to provide good smart bombing cover for its dreads, who are now out of siege and have enough weight of carriers on the field to rep against sentry drone damage. This signals the time for return to the shield. It's a dangerous part of the operation, because once several legs of the spider cross the shield edge, the rep amount would drop vastly. To make it possible, a previously phantom triage carrier finally does appear and sacrifices itself to provide a burst of extreme rep as the last carriers make it for the shield. Aside from a single battleship, the herding triage carrier becomes our only casualty of the fight.
never been 